Paris was the scene of a 20th century school of musical composition that was very influential in the whole of Europe and in the United States in fine art music. That grew out of the influence of Eric Satie and the group of composers that became known as Les Six. And in history books, they're called the French Six. They hung out at a cafe that eventually was called The Ox on the Roof by Jean Cocteau. The great French composers who were involved were Darius Miaud, Francis Poulenc, Arthur Honegger, and some others of not quite as prominent a memory except for Georges Auric. Their style of composition was an influence on me as a young man. While in Paris, I was very much thinking of those composers, but I was there a little too late to study with any of them. Miode had died, I believe, in 1971. I was five years too late to study with Darius Miode. I did study with a close friend of his, Charles Jones. Jones had been in Paris with Miode during the era when all this was first happening. I told Charles Jones that I was an admirer of Miode and that I wished I could have studied with him. And Jones told me, he said, well, maybe you can get the spirit of Miode from me. Miode was probably the biggest conscious influence on me when I was a music student. He was one of the only composers I could really relate to in my studies. And I think now that that's because Miode was a very prolific melodist. This piece sat on my desk when I was studying music at the Juilliard School as a young man. And I think the idea of true melody being written in the 20th century was very much on my mind. Everything around me was atonal, couldn't sustain a melody very long. Themes were entirely instrumental in nature. You could barely sing anything. In order to explain what I think that French spirit is and how it influenced me, I need to go a little further and mention a French film that made a tremendous impression on me in my 20s and is still one of the favorite films of many French people, Les Enfants du Paradis, The Children of Paradise. This was one of the first major film productions after World War II and when I was a young man, I was 
really stunned by the sense of theater that that film communicates, both the mime of the main character, the mime routines, and the kind of naive form of French theater influenced by the Commedia dell'arte and having an innocence. I'm speaking of that. There's a naivete and behind that is a, a potent meaning. There's a painting that I think communicates that very well. That is by Georges Rouault. Here we have one of his paintings of clowns. For the most part, his clowns are a little bit sadder than this one. Mostly it's a happy portrait. The colors and the subject matter display that French sense of naivete. But also there's something very profound behind this. You see in the heavily modeled form and the lines in it, Rouault was very interested in sculpture and sculptural volume in painting. And that's also here. Behind this naivete is a true form of classicism, a concern with the human figure and depth of form. All of that is almost hidden by the playfulness of the colors and the subject matter. An ingenue is, in, in American movies and in American theater, an ingenue role is usually an innocent or naive person, but a charmingly naive person. really was inspired, as I've said, by Les Enfants du Paradis, the great French film of the late 1940s. It really was almost a life-changing impact, but I would say life-changing in terms of artistic thinking. I'm here in front of this wonderful scenic backdrop of Paris that originates from the Metropolitan Opera. This backdrop was part of the Manon production originating in 1928. This was added as, as the show continued throughout the year.